PlayStation Showcase. This is a podcast about gaming, gaming news, all gaming platforms, and technology in general from the perspective of a lifelong nerd. And now, dad, gamer, I am Morgan, aka Bond Diesel. Please take a moment to subscribe to and rate the podcast on whatever platform you listen to it on. Comments, likes, and subs on YouTube, retweets on Twitter, and the iTunes reviews are the most helpful. Also, be sure to let me know if you have any questions or topics uh, for uh, the next show by replying on Twitter, uh, posting in the YouTube comments, or by becoming a patron. Thank you to our Patreon supporters this month, Hassan, Christian, Darren, Tim, PK, Manmade Golf, Lunchbox, and Dale. If you'd like to support this podcast and my other content, please check out patreon.com slash Diesel. This episode, we are going to talk about the PlayStation Showcase, Mass Effect, Next, The Division News, quote-unquote, recent game reviews, listener questions, content updates, and more. Jumping right into the PlayStation Showcase, it was quite a doozy, so let's talk about it. The first, uh, I I skipped a few games that I just don't even want to comment on, if I have to be totally honest. I would only have bad things to say and they aren't even exclusives i don't think Um, so we'll just pretend like those don't exist Um, the first game i will mention is the kotar uh, knights of the old republic remake that was announced um some interesting things about that so um if you don't know on uh so kotar was on uh, pc it was an xbox console exclusive uh, and it still is to this day the remake is going to be a PlayStation launch exclusive. So it sounds like at some point it's going to come to Xbox as well. Um, and I believe I tried to do a little bit of digging because I don't think it was really obvious in uh, the press release, but I believe it's going to be day one PC as well. So um, for PC players, you, you'll be fine. Um, the I'd say the biggest thing about this is that it's not Bioware doing the remake. So this is not a legendary edition Mass Effect situation. This is a a different company um, that's that's doing it. Uh, kind of, I actually would be really curious to learn about the licensing deals and how that works, um, and whether or not uh, I assume Lucas Arts or Disney or someone has the rights to it and can let whoever wants to work on it work on it. Um, and obviously Sony probably playing up the cash to make it exclusive to them, at least at first. So, um, I never played KOTOR, so this honestly means nothing to me, but it is something I may, uh, check out on PC. So, uh, or if it comes to Xbox in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so exciting. That's, it seems like the people who are into that are very excited. Um, Project Eve, they showed that, I don't know what the fuck that was all about, so... <laughs> okay <laughs> well uh i don't know some of this stuff definitely wasn't my thing uh tiny tiny tina's wonderland i don't believe this is exclusive to xbox or to sony um to playstation i don't like the borderlands games i think that they are they try way too hard to be funny um, i don't find the humor entertaining at all and i hate cell shaded games like this um, obviously I liked, um, like the walking dead and, you know, maybe I, I, I didn't mind it in that context through that type of game. Um, it also did become a little bit more realistic looking as the series went on, but, um, uh, regardless the, um, yeah, I don't know, um, I, that I have no interest in that. And if you're into it and if that's your jam, then I'm super excited for you, but that game does not hold any interest to me personally so um it looked okay i guess it just looked like borderlands um forespoken so this is probably i promise i'm gonna be more positive towards the end here um i think forespoken looks awful i i'm um i i think that there's a lot of excitement about it because 
it's 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 a potentially big Sony exclusive, and and, and the people who are in um, in that community and in that platform get excited about anything that's like big and new for them. Um, I think I, I think it looked awful. I think the graphics looked abysmal. Um, it looks like like an Unreal test demo, like a, like a like a test game um that that game that um or the 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 test thing that they or the uh the showcase thing they did for unreal 5 when it got revealed it's that's just it just looks like that to me um it, it i it's just I'm, I'm confused because there's a lot of excitement about that game but it just looks so just i don't know i i, I don't get the excitement for it um it, it also looks like it's going to kind of border on that line of trying too hard to be like really edgy and really, you know, you know breaking, you know, breaking ground or whatever. Um, so uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, I did just realize that if you're watching the video, my wife put our step stool in the background of, uh, and we're just going to roll with it. That's just the way we're going. So if you're an audio listener, if you want to see what I'm talking about, check out that YouTube youtube.com slash c slash bond diesel get up so for spoken i don't i don't get it I, it doesn't look interesting to me I, I think it looks very generic and kind of weird and plain but i hope i'm very wrong i probably will be ghostwire tokyo i don't know what the fuck that's all about with slender man and a bunch of other weird shit going on um i i don't think that's an exclusive i thought i remember seeing that that was going to come be multi -plot. um I don't know, man. This showcase had a bunch of games where I was just like, this is not my jam. And then then we got to this part of the show. Um, so the Uncharted Legacy Remaster, I've actually never played an Uncharted game. Um, they seem like they'd be my jam. Basically, dude, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider. Um, and uh, I do intend uh, to get a PS5 eventually. It's going to be a while. Um, and I would prefer to get a PS5 digital um, when I get one. So um, that probably won't be for another year or two, though. I'm okay to wait. Um, they showed more Deathloop. I don't think anyone on Earth wants to see more of this game. Um, I think the people excited for it are don't want to get spoiled in anything more. And I think the people who don't care still don't care. So um, I think it looks it, it is funny that there's going to be an Xbox Studios publishing logo on a PS5 exclusive game. I'm, I think it's a timed exclusive. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, but because it's being developed by one of the studios that Xbox uh, acquired. Um, but there were, I'm sure there are contractual obligations that um, they still had to honor the deal to be exclusive. Um, a new game was teased, uh, Wolverine. So it's going to be another um, uh Marvel game made by Insomniac, who did the Star Wars or Star Wars, who did uh, Spider Man and Miles Morales, um, which are both um, pretty highly rated, very heralded games um, as comic book games, but it was just games in general. And Insomniac has, you know, a ridiculous history, and um, I'm sure another Wolverine game will be super cool. What I think will be interesting is um, there was the Wolverine game that came back, I think, back in the 360 era. That wasn't really that good, but it was hyper gruesome. It was very, very graphic. And I really hope that's the direction they go with this Wolverine game. Um, I, I don't think that the Spider-Man games are very graphic or brutal. Um, and I just, I really don't think you're doing a Wolverine game justice if it's not just brutal. Um, so uh, that's a game that oddly enough would actually be a system seller for me um especially being made by insomniac um so uh, i'll be keeping my eye very close on that one um gran turismo 7 was shown i it, it's what's so interesting about the whole uh, like forza and gran turismo thing is um, both of those games i think are really good um, and i like forza uh, and i like gran turismo back in the day but um i don't really think that the racing genre is really that big and for people who are really into that i i have to imagine that the more like sim type games um that are out uh, i think project cars and stuff like that um, i have to imagine those are the games that are more preferred 
So it's kind of funny where like Forza and now Forza Horizon um, where Forza Horizon is much more arcadey. And I think it does appeal to more people um, more Forza and Gran Turismo or like a, they're not really Sims, but they're not casual enough for the average player or like Horizon, I think, is that perfect, like just fun. Just go drive around to be wild. Um, I, I, it just feels like Gran Turismo and Forza now are just tech uh, just tech demos for the, the for the systems like look how fucking dope we can make our games look because they look ridiculous they look so good um so i you know the Gran Turismo 7 look cool but um i kind of question how many people are like really like fell on the floor when that got announced so we'll see um spider-man 2 got announced um i don't believe it showed any actual gameplay i think it was just a trailer um uh, it sounds like it's uh, definitely, I guess, like Venom and maybe Carnage. Um, it sounds like it was kind of, uh, th there was a we used word. Um, so unless there's some weird things going on with gender pronouns with Venom, it seems like they're trying to um, say that uh, there's going to be a, uh, multiple baddies. So, I mean, it looks like it's going to be Spider-Man and Miles Morales coming together in some capacity. So, cool. That's uh, that game was especially Spider-Man. The original is still talked about as being one of the more impressive games on PlayStation, and it is a full exclusive. And Miles Morales got panned a little bit for basically just being a big DLC uh, that I think was sold at full price. Uh, but you know, people bought it, and I've still heard really great things about it. Uh, so yeah, and then they wrapped up their show with God of War. I think as most people expected. Um, it's going to be a Nordic thing again. Um, they did an after show where they showed some, uh, I think like art and stuff like that, that showed like Thor and, um, some other, uh, you know, well-known, uh, you know, kind of Viking Nordic, uh, myth mythological features will be involved. Um, so I predicted, I think it was last week. I said, I bet this God of War two or Valhalla is it really going to be like a God of War 2, but it's going to be more of like Miles Morales uh, or what Miles Morales was to God of War or uh, to Spider-Man 1. And I think that's showing that that's probably the case. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to be short. That doesn't mean it's going to be bad. Um, I mean, God of War still holds up today um, and it's still, you know, one of the very, very respected games um, and gaming in general. And... Um, there's there's some people being stupid showing that like there's an animation where um kratos is jumping into a boat and someone compared it to the animation in god of war and it's exactly the same well newsflash um if it ain't broke don't fix it and i'm sure that animation was good then it's still good now and instead of spending you know a week or two on an animation of him jumping into a boat to make a brand new one from scratch uh, which is what apparently this person on Twitter wants. Um, they were probably able to make a whole different boss or add detail to this other area or make the game run smoother in, in this part. So, I mean, th that's why I'm kind of predicting that this is going to be more of the same um, from God of War. Uh, well, I'm, if I remember correctly, that was game of the year. And I'm sure they will you know, boost the graphics. I'm sure they will add new mechanics and, and things to it. Um, and uh, so more of the same when you're talking about one of the best games ever made in a lot of people's opinions is probably going to be okay because I bet they aren't going to do exactly the same. And they'll put just enough in there to make it feel like a new experience. And that's fine because for every one person who tries to moan and groan about it, uh, who's probably driven by some stupid console or bullshit, um, there's probably going to be like 100,000 people who love it. So, uh, yeah, so I'm sure God of War is going to be fine. I think the, the main omission that I was surprised they, they, they didn't talk about at all was what... Um, what the last of us team is going is doing um so i believe there was supposed to be dlc for the last of us 2 and then there's also supposed to be the multiplayer now i if i remember correctly i thought that the multiplayer at least got delayed and potentially got canceled but don't quote me on that um so i was surprised that we didn't get any news from them but you know that's that's where we're at so um overall it was a great show i think that the heavy hitters at the end 
definitely boosted what I personally found to be a bunch of trash at the beginning. If I have to be totally honest, I, I think everything up to Wolverine was either like, yeah, I'm just not going to get super excited about remasters and, and things like that. Um, and then a bunch of weirdo games that I, are just not appealing to me. Obviously, I'm sure there are people who are super hyped about it, but I think that, you know, the Wolverine, Spider-Man and God of War were such strong announcements that the thing about Sony is that they have so many good IPs exclusive to them that they don't have to do that much to have a good show. Um, I still think that they should catch more shit for all of their exclusives and all their best games being third person adventure games every single one and that's fine because they're so good that they can do that right but it would be cool to see them put out like a really good first person game or a really good like rpg or mmo or something I, other than i guess gran turismo but um it, and i'm sure that's coming i'm sure that they're they've got stuff in the works but um yeah i mean overall it was obviously a great show and it was very much carried by its heavy hitters which is exactly what it's supposed to do so good for playstation uh the second story i was going to talk about was some mass effect uh news or developments or whatever um so jeff grubb put out uh, a tweet and some information saying that um if you don't know um bioware is under ea if you don't know that somehow and ea made a big push years ago uh and basically told all their studios like hey uh you know dice has this um frostbite engine uh and we want it's our in-house engine we own it because we own dice and and who makes battlefield uh, and that's what that engine was developed for was battlefield battlefield three i think um because i think one i think the earlier ones were on unreal um and they basically forced all of the companies that they own to use uh frostbite and um if you don't know mass effect one two and three were all on unreal three i believe um back in the uh the, the playstation 3 and xbox 360 era and um you know we saw what happened um with well, really with a bunch of ea properties um, i remember during the switch over to frostbite there were issues in all their sports games there were issues uh, with were any of the medal of honor games frostbite i can't remember um frostbite works really well for the battlefield series it's a gorgeous engine um, but it seems like you know it was made for that style of game and it seems like there's been issues with trying to make that switch um, you know, if you played Andromeda, even today with all the updates and fixes that they've put in, it still just doesn't seem right. And when you read about the development of Andromeda, you will find that one, it was not their A team and two, it was, they had to spend so much time recreating systems from the Mass Effect main series and trying to move them over to Frostbite by basically doing them from scratch and when you know you, you have a team on a on a you know a, a fairly short development cycle that's inexperienced and is working with a legendary ip and they have to spend a bulk or a majority of their their development not working on the story and characters and animations and things like that and they spend it trying to recreate systems in this new engine for them you get andromeda which is a game that I think if you're a Mass Effect fan, you should play. And I, I played it once and I'll probably never play it again. I have very neutral feelings about it. It was fine. Um, still not great. And, and I wouldn't even call it good. It was Mass Effect Andromeda is an okay game. And uh, so what I think, um, you know, and then Bioware also had issues with Anthem and, and this kind of same vein. So I think what you're seeing is Bioware knows that this next Mass Effect game has to be big. It has to be good. Um, I bet EA agrees and because they want to make a bunch of money off of it. And so there's rumors that Bioware is at least toying with the idea of using Unreal Engine 5 um, 
for the next Mass Effect. Now, Jeff Grubb called it Mass Effect 5. Because Andromeda wasn't a numbered game, I still consider the next game Mass Effect 4. Because if you read about Andromeda, in my opinion, from what I've read, um, it sounds like Andromeda was intended to be a... A sp- not a spin-off necessarily, but it was meant to be its own trilogy. It was meant to be its own set of games, and it's set in a different galaxy hundreds of years after the events of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. And because of that, I don't consider it part of the, you know, the 1, 2, 3. Um, I very much consider it, uh, you know, its own series, especially after they canceled 2 and 3, or the, 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 the trilogy of Andromeda, um, now they have said that the next Mass Effect, or they've said and they've kind of insinuated that both galaxies will be involved, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy. Um, that's led a lot of people to imply that um, Mass Effect, the next Mass Effect, is going to take place in the same time frame as Andromeda, which would be hundreds of years after Mass Effect Three, which would mean that basically all of the characters that we knew from Mass Effect One, Two, and Three will be dead. Uh, Liara, um, in theory, any Krogans could still be alive. Um, there's rumors and there's people who have speculated that um, because of uh, the events of two, um, that Shepard could still be alive because he's so full of biotics that he may basically be closer to a robot than a man, um, considering that he was brought back to life essentially. Um, and if you do Mass Effect 3 the right way, he lives. Um, spoiler alert. Um, but come on, <laughs> it's it's a very old game. And if you haven't figured that out by now, I don't feel that bad. So, um, I, I mean, it seems like Unreal Engine 5 is, is such a good engine. And um, it, it, Unreal in general it just seems like it's so easy to work with. And I, I, I really hope that's the direction they go. Um, I did see some rumors, people saying like, oh, well, if they use Unreal Engine 5, that means that you could carry over your save from Mass Effect Legendary Edition to, to the next Mass Effect. Um, one, I hope so. I hope you can do that because um, even if it does skip ahead hundreds of years, it still would be cool, even if in like maybe somewhat mundane or menial ways, choices that you made during the series could show in the next game even if it's not like the main focus or 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 it doesn't impact giant story arcs um it 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 still would be cool um there is um also the idea of uh, they probably could have carried over your choices from the legendary edition even if it was on frostbite um my understanding is that uh, when you go from one to, to two to three, when you go to two and three, it's literally just reading like a text file of your decisions. It's it's not like it's using the engine to transfer those decisions, you know, your your progress or the things that you did. It's it's probably using literally a TXT file um, that just logs everything that you pick and then moves it to the next game and, and affect those things. So, it, I mean, they could have probably done that either way. Um, I think the final big news that he kind of threw out there um, is that uh, he's under the impression that actual physical development of the next Mass Effect won't begin until 2023. Um, so 2023, that means that not next year, but the year after that is when they'll actually start development. Most games have a two to three year development cycle. Um, and so what this tells me from what I know, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of insight into game uh, games being made and I um, you know know a lot of people who work at a bunch of different studios obviously Ubisoft studios mostly but some others as well and what I would guess is that means that um, so if you've paid attention to Mass Effect you'll know that in the last year or two they've hired back a bunch of the OG people um, from Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 um, and they're back at Bioware and they have been for some time Um, Now, Casey Hudson did leave back in December, I believe. Um, So my so what I'm assuming is they're in like serious pre-production mode right now and they will be for the next year and a half um, or at least a year and three months or whatever. And what that says to me is that one, that's a that's probably a good thing. Um, You know, 
we get used to games coming out and then a sequel coming out two or three years later and that's because they probably did pre-production on the first game for multiple years and even planned for the second game and then they jumped into development of the first one that took two or three years and then they jumped straight into development of the next one that's essentially what happened to the division one and two if you're part of that community or you're aware of that game and that's basically what i think happened to mass effect one two and three is that they made those games fairly quickly after each other um and mass effect one even though graphically and stuff it's not as impressive as two and three the depth of its systems and the 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 size of that game you can just tell they had so much more time to work on that game um so i mean obviously it's a bummer to consider that mass effect whatever next to four or five whatever it's going to be um, or it'll probably be something else entirely um it's a bummer to know that it's probably not coming until 2026 at the earliest uh, which is five years from now um but that's probably a good thing and there's so many other games and honestly the legendary edition i'll talk about more about this later i'm on my third playthrough of that already <laughs> so i um, mean i have other games to play as i'll talk about as well so um I, the mass effect news if you've been listening to the podcast you'll know that it was like an awakening for me you know this spring in, in this summer playing that game um i had always dismissed the series and, and didn't think it'd be my thing and now it legit is at least tied with the division for being my favorite series if you keep it between us it it's probably overtaken the division so um so there's your Mass Effect news if you haven't caught it before. Speaking of the division, um, we actually I'm going to talk a bit about that. So, um, as as all of the YouTubers will have you know this week, Yannick tweeted, and um, it was in response to someone saying like, "Hey, why is this?" Um, so they're in season seven, which is a replay of season four, and it's seven because they skipped season two and the replays. So if that all makes sense, um, and it sounds like they did that because they had a expected time of release of this new content. And if they would have done season two, it would have pushed the seasons beyond their anticipated release date for the new content. So what that means is that in theory, if season um, seven, which is a replay of four, which is phase season manhunt, um, in theory, it should end around November, middle of November um now right now it's set to go on for 22 weeks so um that would put it well beyond that um and so someone tweeted yannick like hey why does it say it's gonna last for 22 weeks um is, does that mean new content isn't coming until next year and yannick responded and said no we, we put that in there so we can be intentionally vague um so it doesn't set a date for us before we can set the date um i'm paraphrasing and um yeah that's why and so then came the YouTube videos and then came the tweets and everyone speculating and, and, and doing the thing that they always do. Um, so what I will say is that um, to me, that says that one, the fact that he even responded um, says I'm willing to bet that they're probably on time and that they're, I mean, they would probably be in the polishing phase of whatever they're working on. If we're in September, um, I, I, I suspect they're going to announce what it is next month and then it will probably release in November. Um, and that's okay. Um, I know that people are anxious and they, and they want information. The thing is, is that the division, especially, and, but a lot of games has, has handled hype so badly and they've, and they've gotten people so hyped in the past only to be kind of let down by what comes um, and it, a lot of it came from them, like giving us too little information that was also too much too, too early. And then people like, and, and they, they sensationalize and they kind of speculate too much. And it probably includes myself. And, um, I, I know people are, uh, very anxious, but I really think that I, I really hope that they like announce in October, like, Hey, it's October 15th or whatever. Uh, this is what is coming to division two and it's coming in one month it comes next month and then there's a few weeks of hype some trailers and you know all that good stuff and then it's over and then they, we get it and we go from there um i've been pretty 
pushy about telling people don't expect the moon here. Um, I've seen people saying that they think that they're going to like add a DZ to New York or like double the size of the DC map that that shit's probably not happening, man. Like, like, like be real. Um, you know, they've talked about this new mode that's new to the series, so it's not going to be last stand or survival or anything. Um, expect that to, to be probably something pretty substantial. They, they essentially recreated a division team, um, to make this, uh, who, and I'm sure they're working on other stuff. I know there's been talk of seasons and manhunts and, and, and apparel events and all that. So I'm sure they've got people working on those things too. Right. Um, that's probably a smaller team. I, I am, I imagine the bulk of people are working on this new game mode and it's probably gonna be pretty substantial. I don't think that they would bring back. I don't think they would dedicate all these resources to do something like the summit that, that, that is fine, but isn't really that big of a deal. Um, but I still think people should go in with low expectations. I, I just, because what it's doing is it's setting up now. I know that the, 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 the predicted people are, are, you know, making all their hype videos right now. Like, Oh, I can't wait. And, and then it's going to come out and no matter what it is, they're going to be like, Oh, this is a disappointment failure. Destiny to like, you know, I mean, that's, that's going to happen. I can tell you today that, that that's how it's going to happen. The same people hyping the shit up now and, you know, speculating and, 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 and acting like they have information when they really have nothing um, and, and being so excited. Uh, they already have their scripts written for, you know, November when it comes out and they say, this is disappointing. And they have a video with their face and they're all scrunched up and they're looking at the camera like, I don't like this. You know, it's, it's going to happen. I can tell you today that that's already planned. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think people should keep their expectations reasonable um, and then kind of just be excited that we're getting more because season four was supposed to be the end and it wasn't. Um, it was probably always a plan to redo the seasons to run them through again, but I don't think we were supposed to get anything else. And there's a lot of reasons to believe that. So, um, and when it comes to, to the sensationalism and stuff, like I, I really, 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 um, encourage people to not watch those videos, to not retweet those tweets, to not interact with those people. They, it's, it's just, I understand that people are trying to stay relevant and I, and I understand that people are trying to keep their clicks and get their 30 cents from their video, from their ad revenue, but it's just, this is a really good time for people to try to expand their boundaries. Um, it's something I've tried to do. Hasn't really been that successful, but I'm having fun with it. And, um, you know, I, when Heartland and Division 2's content comes out, I'm probably going to talk a shit ton about it and make videos and stream it for sure, obviously. But until then, until there's something to actually talk about or actually make videos for, or actually stream, um, yeah, I just really encourage people not to reinforce some of the bad behavior that's going on. That's my plea. Up to you to go for it or not. I do have some mini game reviews I wanted to kind of give. Um, so I am actually replaying the Division Two. Uh, I'm doing it live on stream. If you check out the vods um, on my uh, on my YouTube page, you can see those. Um, they are pretty clearly marked with their thumbnails and such. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I never played through the game again after I played it the first time. My my main character, I've only ever played them. I've like restarted the game a couple times and just never gone through with it. This is the most I've gone through with it since um, Division 2 came out. And it's a lot of fun. That, that that 1 to 30 or 1 to 40 experience, if you have Warlords, is, is really great. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. I understand the story isn't like the best story in the world. and um, It's better than I remember, if I have to be totally honest. Um, and they did a bunch of quality of life updates to the, the, to the 1 to 30 or 1 to 40. Um, that weren't there when the game released I'm, I've noticed a bunch of stuff where it's like, oh man, this is so much nicer than the first time I played back in 2019. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun and it's definitely kind of reinvigorated. I, I wanted to do this to kind of, you know, I assume by the time that I finish the new content will be out and it'll be fun to get back into it. Um, like I said before, I am actually playing through Mass Effect again. So, um, what I did, I did something kind of tricky. Um, I played through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. Um, and I 
um, I played through the one, two, and three the first time and, and, and just rushed to throw them and, and didn't. It sucked. It, 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 I mean, it was amazing. It was one of my favorite gaming experiences ever. But I rushed it way too fast. I beat all three of them in like a week. Way too fast. So then after I beat it the first time, I went from one to three again. Um, but when I was in two, I found a point in the like the second third or the like like two thirds of the way through the game where I hadn't romanced anyone yet. And I had time to do that. And I saved it as a like a blank save. And so now I can start from there and choose different paths from there. And that's what I've done now. So um, my first main playthrough, uh, the my romance partner there was Tally. Um, I'm pretty much always going to pick the destroy ending and three. Um, I really see no reason to pick the other ones. It's the only one that makes sense to me. Um, but this time I'm doing a, a romance with Liara, um, who I believe and I think will become the quote unquote canon romance uh, when the next game comes out. Because I, I don't know if Shepard's going to be involved in the next game or whatever, but I do think that um, they are going to canonize the destroy ending, probably romancing Liara. And um, I want to have a save available for that, assuming they're going to let us carry it over. Um, playing through it again, I mean, it's it's like it's that's just, it's just such a good series. If you haven't played Mass Effect, even if you're not into those type of games, you should check it out. I I really fell in love with that series. Um, and even though I don't love Andromeda, um, I mean, the the next Mass Effect is my most anticipated game right now. It just sucks that it's probably five years away or more. Uh, and then the final one, man, um, a game called The Artful Escape came out. Um, it's on Game Pass. That's where I played it. It's on other platforms as well. It is wild. It is such a cool experience. It is not my type of game. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a side scroller walking simulator music game. I don't know, but it's art direction and it it's just it's bizarre. It's great. Um, so The Artful Escape. Um, it's amazing. Please check it out. If you have game pass specifically, you have to check it out. If you don't maybe look at some videos, check it out and see if it might be your thing and pay out. It's, I assume it's 20 or 30 bucks. Um, I, I, I can't wait to finish it. I'm not done with it yet. I've played through it. I think a pretty big chunk of it. Um, but I know I'm not done and, uh, I would really love for you all to take that journey with me. It's so cool. Uh, with listener questions this week, uh, we have Master Prime, uh, the old reliable here. Um, you had one question I already answered about Yannick. Um, so you know, I'll answer your, your other three. Your first one is what makes the division special? Um, I think for me, what makes the division special is that it's, if you look at the other games in the same genre, they are all like fantasy, space, kind of magic games where the division has those elements but they're covered by a realistic aesthetic um and and i know that's why i like it and i don't like those other games um, i don't like warframe i don't like destiny um you know I, I i like the division um now i will argue that i like the division despite it being a looter um, I think the division would fit much better and be in a genre, something closer to Mass Effect um, or to the old Ghost Recon games and things like that. But that's just me. Um, but I think what it's just the game, it's so good to play. Um, even if you get bored running the same content, even if you are mad that they it's not as good as it should be or that, you know, they don't put out enough content for it or whatever that's fine but it's still it's just a good it feels so good to play that's doing this this new playthrough it's reminded me like god this game just feels so good to play and um and i think that's what makes it special uh your second question is how is the change from twitch to youtube going it's been really good there's definitely some things about youtube um that you know i wish they had some of the features twitch has um but on the other hand um I, I've, it, there's also a bunch of stuff YouTube does that I like a lot more scheduling streams and, um, you know, the quality I'm able to stream um, the podcast that I, I tried 1440p the other day and it worked great. Um, and I, I can stream at like 10 or 10,000 or more bit rate, which makes it look just incredible. Um, and they have a really good encoder thing. So if you can't stream it that high, you can drop it down and it works and you don't have to be partnered. And, um, it's, it's been really nice. Um, 
I think it's going to be a long slog to get partnered, but I do think I can do it. Um, especially when or if Heartland and the Division 2 content comes out, I think I can pump a lot of content during that time and and probably hit the numbers I need to hit. And uh, that's really exciting. So it's it's been really great. Um, and then the final uh, question from Master Prime here is, are you going to play the Halo Infinite Tech Preview? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I plan on knocking that, um, hitting that pretty hard this weekend. So um, if it's allowed to be streamed, which I believe it is, I will be playing on stream. Uh, for sure uh, i'd prefer to play on my xbox but um, i think i will probably get a steam code uh, so i'll play it on my pc so yeah um, master prime thank you very much for your questions as always um, again like i said at the beginning if you have your own questions um, you can hit me up on twitter you can post them in the youtube comments um, or if you uh, are a patron you can uh, post questions or send me a message on there uh, as for content updates, nothing real big. I already talked, I already answered Master Prime's question about the Switch and how that's going. I've really enjoyed it so far. Um, I do have a bunch of VODs and stuff available that are starting to pop up. Um, they will have their own playlist soon-ish. Um, I've redid the thumbnails so it's more obvious when there's a VOD um, and it's a little bit less obnoxious when it's a, uh, a live stream, when it's going live. Um, yeah, it's good. Um, the only other big update is that I finally, I did find through EVGA a, um, a 2080 Super. So I wanted a 3060 Ti GPU for my PC, um, but the 2080 Super is, uh, a, it's actually a little bit better. It's a very solid card um, and it's going to do the things I want. And I found it for a price that's less than I can get a 3060 Ti for. So no complaints there. Um, I am excited to um, to get that and install it i am actually selling my uh, 1070 ti if you're interested in that you know you can message me on twitter um, i do have a post up there with some pictures of it uh, and let me know if you're interested in it um, i'm selling it on ebay i'm sure it's going to go on there for the price i have it um and other than that that's kind of all i have this week so um just so you know, I do stream here on YouTube. If you're watching me the video or if you're an audio listener, check me out um, on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash C slash Von Diesel. Um, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell. Please um, like every video you can. Hit that thumbs up, leave comments. Um, that is great for the algorithm and get my channel noticed and get me closer to that partnership. Um, you can check me out on Twitter at Von Diesel or at The Echo Cast if you just want gaming tweets and retweets. Um, if you want some cool Echo Cast or Von Diesel merch, check out streamlabs.com slash Von Diesel. And uh, that's all I have. So until next time. Thank you.